We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him because He is worthy of praise. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the evils within ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace and blessings upon the last and final messenger, upon His family, His companions, His wives, and all those who follow His way until the end of time. Ya yuhan nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba Ya yuhan alladhina amanu taqu allaha wa kulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfil lakum dunubakum wa man yuta'i allaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azima we remind, one other, we remind one another to be people of taqwa, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the muttaqeen. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Amma ba'd. I want to share with you all today the inaugural speech of Uthman, or the speech that he gave when he was appointed as the Khalifa of the believers. And to, for us to really absorb the message of Uthman, we need to draw parallels between when Uthman was giving this message who he is, and who he's speaking to with our current modern-day circumstances. And Uthman, as we probably already know, he was very wealthy, not just in money, but in Iman as well. It is estimated that his wealth surpassed a billion dollars today. Yet his Iman is a model for all of us for the past 1,400 years. He is speaking to a community of people who have gone from a one-man show, the Prophet ﷺ, to dealing with the oppression and the bullying of Quraysh, to having to leave it all to immigrate to Medina, to starting a, a brand new product from zero, from ground zero, and dealing with those struggles, to defeating Quraysh, to bringing all of Arabia into Islam, to expanding north, east, and west. Uthman is talking to a community who in 30 years did it all. It's a strong community. So imagine yourself as part of that community. How would you feel? You'd feel a lot of pride. I don't mean bad pride. You'd be proud of those accomplishments. You'd be proud of yourself that you endured and you were resilient and from resilience you went to strength and, and, and. You'd be proud. And this is who Uthman is talking to. Now in our times today, the Muslims, at least the immigrant uh, portion of the Muslim Ummah here in America, have been around for 40 some years. And we have gone to not, from nothing, not a single masjid, to having masajid all over the place from not having an economy, to mashallah, many millionaires within our community, to not having a political voice, to being a player within the broader political scope. Now, I, I'm not saying we have reached the end point, but the idea is we have made many gains as the original believing community have. And as we continue to pursue Zionism and to expose it, and to educate the American population about the evil of this ideology and about the evil of the policies of the Israeli state, we must look to the speech of Uthman عن, as the source by which and through which we continue to maintain strength. Because as a community gets stronger, they very often disconnect from the core that made them strong in the first place. So Uthman عن, talking to the community, he says, Ya yuhan nas, inna, inna dunya tuyat ala al gurur, fala tagurrannakum al hayatu dunya, wala yagurrannakum billahi al gurur, irmu bid dunya haythu ramaha Allah, watlubu al akhira. He begins and says, O oh people, this world, this life, the fabric upon which this life was created is deceptive. This life is deceiving. It deceives you to believe it can give you more than what it can actually give. It deceives you to believe that in this world is your happiness and it has no happiness to provide you. It deceives you into believing that the more you have, the better off you are. It deceives you into believing that what you possess, you will, will stay with you for eternity and it will not. 
It will deceive you into believing that no matter how many years you have lived, you still have many more to live. Don't let this world deceive you. And don't let the shaitan deceive you by convincing you that these are the realities. Dear brothers and sisters, know, as the Prophet ﷺ explicitly indicated to us, the greatest weakness of this ummah, the weakness that breaks this ummah apart at the individual level and at the communal level and as the ummah is love of this world. It is worldliness that makes us weak. Look at the past hundred years of this ummah. Why are we in the mess that we are in? Why is Palestine in the situation it's in? Why is Kashmir in the situation it's in? Why is Sudan in the situation it's in? Why is Yemen, East Turkestan, and just all across the Muslim world, why are we in this situation? It is because there was an era a hundred years ago where the Muslims only cared about worldliness, only cared about imitating the West. And so if you go to Turkey, to the museums there, which are very beautiful, and you look at the last Ottoman museum, what do you find there? The utensils that they used to use, which were imported from the West. The place that they used to use, which are imported from the West. The art that they used to uh, hang in their palaces, which were imported from the West. Now, I'm not saying there's something inherently wrong with learning from other civilizations, but it is the worldliness that made us weak. And so the Prophet ﷺ says, لَيْسَ الْفَقْرُ أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمْ I am not afraid that this ummah will be poor. Rather, he was afraid that this world would be open up to us. And we will love it and be attracted to it. And we will miss and forget about our purpose, our true source of strength. And that is the pursuit of the afterlife. And we will compete with one another over this world and we will end up envying one another, hating one another and attacking one another over this world. And so as we continue our way forward and as we make clear, tangible progress in what we thought was an impossible mission, alhamdulillah, we must reacquaint ourselves with the source of the strength of the ummah and to continue to channel into that so that we can bring the Palestinian cause to a final end, to end that brutality, to bring liberation to a people who have been subjugated for 75 years. And then after that, go put our sights on India and the oppression of Modi on the Muslims over there and Kashmir and the list goes on. Your strength is pursuing the afterlife, as Uthman says. And remember who he is speaking to. He is speaking to a community that has defeated the Roman superpower, the Persian superpower. And he's telling them, hey, don't fall, don't fall off course. Don't disconnect yourself from your true source of strength. Don't love this world. Rather use this world for your pursuit in the afterlife. And Uthman ta'ala continues and he says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ تَقْوَى اللَّهِ غُنْمٌ وَإِنَّ أَكْيَسَ النَّاسِ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ he says, O oh people, he says, O oh people, have taqwa of Allah, be conscious of Allah, because that is your treasure, that is your strength. And the wisest of people, now he is explaining what taqwa is, how do you live by taqwa? He says, he says, the wisest of people are those who hold themselves accountable and they act based on what will happen after death. This is the strength of the ummah. And so we must see, as we continue our efforts here in America, we must see that taqwa is our source of strength. It is not our numbers. It is not our sophistication. It is not our wealth. Rather, it is taqwa. And once Abdul Rahman or, or Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, for the first time he joined the Muslim military and he is looking at the opposing army, which is astronomically larger in number. And naturally, as a new believer, he's, he's scared. He's like, whoa, what, what's going on here? And the companion next to him noticed the fear in his face. And he said, oh, Abu, Abu Huraira, it's not numbers that would give victory. It is our taqwa of Allah. That is what gives victory. When you look at APAC and the lobby and those who support Zionism, the amount of wealth they have is unbelievable. They're rooted in societies in a way that is truly, subhanAllah, it's fascinating. I don't mean that in a good way. But take the lesson as Uthman is saying, 
It is not your numbers that will give you victory. It is your taqwa of Allah. And so yes, as we continue to strengthen our political voice here in America, we strengthen our economy, we strengthen our education, our knowledge, our alliances, we should do that. We need to see that simultaneously our taqwa plays an equal role, rather a greater role in pursuing success and victory. Don't think that praying five times a day is meaningless in the broader scope of our goals as American Muslims. Don't think that our efforts in Ramadan and our Qiyams are meaningless in the pursuit of our goals as American Muslims. Don't think that your sadaqah, your extra good deeds, your sunan, your nawafil play no role. Rather, it plays a tremendously powerful role. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make from this ummah leadership when they themselves take the religion seriously. That is the law of the believers. Allah doesn't apply this for other people, non-Muslims, but rather for the Muslims, it is about your taqwa. And as long as you take your taqwa seriously, you'll find Allah opens doors for us. But when we don't take our taqwa seriously and we only focus on the worldly means, then we are setting ourselves up for failure. And last but not least, he continues, radiallahu ta'ala an, and he says, man kana wa'lamu anna man kana Allahu ma'ahu lam yakhaf shay'an wa man kana Allahu alayhi faman yarju ba'da. He concludes by saying the following, whoever Allah is with, what do they have to fear? And whoever Allah is against, who can they have hope in after that? He's showing us that if taqwa is what gains support from Allah, Allah will support us so long as we have taqwa. Our inner strength is built on fear of Allah. It's built on consciousness that Allah holds us accountable, that I must maintain my ethical modesty, my ethical duties in my pursuit of my goals, that I cannot succumb to the games and the deception and the unethical behaviors of the enemy who use it so liberally and so openly. And it seems like they have an advantage as a result of that. No, no, no. Whoever Allah is with, they have nothing to fear. And whoever Allah is against, then what hope do they have after that? And so as we build ourselves as American Muslims, we build our voice, we establish our voices. We must realize that the way to do that from within is by fearing only Allah. So that when we look at the power of those who want to silence us and to bully us, we see it as nothing because the most powerful is with us. But again, don't think that Allah just gives it to the believers. No, He gives it to the believers who fear Him. When you look at the companions, they were people. The final product that we now call the companions, the disciplinary measures of the Prophet, the Qur'an's disciplining of the companions, what was the final product? They became a people who wherever they were, wherever they are, they influenced and they were never influenced. They were the source of influence, the source of change, and they were never changed. They were never influenced except by Allah and His Messenger. That is strength right there. And where did it come from? It came from Allah building this inner sense that I have nothing to fear but Allah. And if I fear Allah, then Allah is with me. And if I don't fear Allah, then Allah is not with me. What do I have then? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala khayri khalqillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala amma ba'd. The question now becomes, how do I actually build this? Uh, we agree with what Uthman radiallahu ta'ala has said. How do I actually live by this? How do I grow it? And it is the masjid where this happens. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala despite his, his, his success as a business person, despite reaching the highest level of worldly status possible at that time. He was the most powerful person walking the earth for 12 years. Despite that, 
you were guaranteed to find Uthman radiallahu ta'ala in the masjid between Maghrib and Aisha every single day. Sitting there, he would lay down between Maghrib and Aisha. Anyone who needs anything, he's there. The masjid is the place where people's iman grows. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, you will find there people who truly care about their iman. People who are truly concerned with their afterlife. People who, who business and trade and money doesn't distract them from the greater purpose, the greater cause, the greater goal. And that is Allah's pleasure and paradise in the afterlife. So if you want to be like what Uthman is advising us to be, you want to live by the advice of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, then make this masjid your routine stop as much as possible. Whether that's Aisha prayer, Fajr prayer, Aisha and Fajr prayer. We as Muslims, especially here in Southern California, especially here in SoCal, we don't frequent the masjid enough. We don't. And a lot of times it's because we are caught up in the grind of day-to-day -day life. I have this meeting, I have this business, I have to take my kids out, I have to. Let Aisha be a daily thing to the best of your ability. Let Fajr be a daily thing to the best of your ability. Don't see the weekly lecture as, eh, I'll just watch it on YouTube, which you will never watch. But rather see it as a part of your desire to bring victory to this ummah. See it as part of your efforts to help the Palestinians, to help the Indian Muslims, to help whoever you are passionate about. Because that's precisely what Uthman ta'ala is teaching us. And he's teaching it to who? The best of the best, who actually reached that success. So dear brothers and sisters, don't let love of this world cause you to become weak. Let your support from Allah be rooted in your taqwa, your consciousness of Allah. And build yourself internally by building that awareness that I have none to fear but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareeb wa jibu da'awat ya rabbil alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds to increase us from his bounty. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook our shortcomings and to forgive us with his uh, maghfirah and his rahmah with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Kashmir, in East Turkestan, in India, in Sudan, in Yemen, in Syria, and wherever, uh, wherever Muslims are, being, are going through difficulty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us American Muslims the source of their alleviation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for that cause. Allahumma ameen wa aqim as-salah.